What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mo. This is my channel, Mo Nation. So, y'all, if I sound very uh, like that, you know, like Squidward, you have to act like him too. My nose is stopped up. So, allergies are really, really bad right now. But, as the title, as you see, the title, uh, as you see in the title, uh, I'm going to tell y'all about my experience of a customer recently tried not to pay me or we I don't know y'all we had some issue with the payment and I'm gonna tell you what I had to do to kind of resolve that issue and just how I felt about it and stuff like that this one I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of backlash in this video because of how I handle it but it is what it is I'm running a business and I like when people play with my money so uh, let's go ahead and get this video started Video is probably gonna be long. It is what it is. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. <sighs> All right, so I had this customer hit me up. I already had did a uh, premium watch for them, which was like seventy-five dollars a CTS, uh, Cad a Cadillac CTS for those today. Right? This is for all the people that say uh, this is a frequent ask question I see in a lot of detailing groups, uh, on my videos, other people's videos, and stuff like that. What do you do if a customer does not pay? What to do, right? That's what everybody want to know. What can you do or what do you do? What have you done? This is my experience on a customer kind of not want to pay or kind of not want to resolve the payment issue that we had. So they had another car, a Nissan Altima. They wanted to do, uh, they wanted to shampoo the seats and shampoo the carpet, a full interior cleaning. Now, I had already gave them a price on that one as well. So, I went ahead, gave them the whole spill. 150 to 300 if you wanna do the full interior detail. Um, and I need pictures. Just, they never sent me pictures. Uh, and they hit me up on the day that I said I had available uh, to do the car. They hit me up that morning and said at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, hey, I forgot to send pictures the other day. Can you still do my car today? I was like, whatever. You know, I just said, good morning. I could probably fit you in later this afternoon. My full interior ranges from 150 to 300, depending on the condition. And then I say, here's the link for that service. Now, y'all, if y'all been watching my channel long enough, y'all know that there's two things I don't do. Same day appointments, and um, I always take deposits. Every time I go and get to one of those, something bad happens. Or it just, it just doesn't end well. Uh, so, Basically, I went against both of those. I didn't make them put a deposit down and I didn't make them do, I did, it was the same day. So then they tell me, after I told them that, they said, it only needs a simple interior cleaning. Can you do $100? I'll send you pics right now. Yes, the carpet on the bottom that I need deep clean, the rest of the car is clean. So at first they'll talk about just the carpet, just shampoo and the carpet. That's another thing I do. I don't negotiate y'all, never negotiate. So I went against that. Um, I kind of didn't negotiate. I said, okay, well, since you say it's not bad, let's go ahead and send me pictures. If it's not that bad, I can do a mini interior uh, cleaning and I'll shampoo the carpets. Uh, then they said, yes, and then they sent me pictures. I looked at the pictures, it was not that bad. It wasn't bad at all, honestly. It was actually pretty clean. I said, okay, I'll do a mini interior uh, and I explained to them it's a basic cleaning. And uh, I told him I can shampoo the shampoo the floor, but wouldn't be touching the seats. Hell no. So then they tried to get me to do the back seat. Uh, but I basically did. I did agree to that. But they asked me how much, and then they asked me can I do the back seat only. And then they said the floor and the back seat. So then I did agree to do the back seat, just the floor. Um, I actually didn't even notice that message. But I told them eighty nine bucks, okay. And then they said okay. I got there right. So, I, like I said, I already went against everything. I get there, uh, they're a little late, they're about 30 minutes late. So finally, I get there, I set up and everything like that. I have to back up the, the van because I have to move out the way and all that other, all, all that other crazy stuff, right? I get there, I do, the, I do the service, I do a mini interior detail, I actually steam, I actually steam the carpet and I, sh and I extracted it. Uh, which was a little bit more than what I said I was gonna do, but I still did it Everything was going good up until the payment. So I went ahead. I used square. 
I tapped, I had already had them as an appointment. Uh, well, no. Nah. So I used Square, I went in my, my system, I found their name, I sent them an invoice for $89. So they came outside and there was an issue. The, uh, the, the first thing they said, the invoice wasn't loaded. So I was like, okay, well, I can cancel it and send another one. Then it was, uh, they said something about, oh, my card didn't save on file. So I'm like, okay, why are we having these different, it's like, I don't know. So I was like, whatever. They said the card didn't save on file, but I can look to see if the card's on file and it wasn't, it was never on file. Even for the last detail, it was never on file. So I was like, whatever. So then they were like, okay, well, let me put my card information in, whatever. Okay. So then they said they paid it, but I never got a dig. I never got no notification or nothing. So I was like, okay, well, did you show sure, you sure you paid it? Because I didn't get anything. They were like, yeah, 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 yeah. I paid it, I saw it on my end. So, let me stop the story right here. This is gonna be, this, I'm, so, this part of the story is gonna make sense on, on for the customer side of things. And then I'm gonna get into why I think they were trying to scam me. And you just gotta kinda hear me out on what I think they were trying to do. So, what happened is, they showed me the payment on their phone, saying, hey, you paid $89 to most mobile detailing and then it showed their available balance and all that stuff. They showed, they was like, oh, I, I was telling them, hey, I didn't get anything. Uh, I'm about to cancel that invoice and send another one. They were like, nah, I'm not going to pay it again. But here, 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 you know, can't shove it in my face. Like, yeah, I paid you, blah, 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 whatever. So I'm like, okay, something's going on. Let me figure this out. Let me call customer service of Square and see what, what what's going on. I call, I finally, I'm looking through my app, trying to figure out what's going on. I can't find nothing. Finally, uh, when I tell them, I say, uh, I'm gonna call customer service real quick. And they hurry up and went in the house, close the door. That was it. I was like, God dang, like, at least give me time to figure it out, like, while I'm here. So I always sit in the van, call customer service. Customer service from Square tell me that the card got declined. Now, I don't know if uh, Square tells them it got declined, or not, that's something I have to look into. But I know whenever I enter the wrong information for my card, uh, it'll tell the card may not say it got declined, but whatever I'm using will tell me it got declined. So basically, Square says it got declined because they put in the wrong code, the wrong uh, three digit number or whatever. They put in the wrong thing. That's why I got declined. I was like, okay, well, did it take the payment? They were like, nah, it's not gonna take the payment. Or they're in, it may show like we took a payment, but it's gonna say, it's gonna show pending dash holding, holding, which means that it's gonna go back into the account. If it did take it out, it's gonna go back to the account next day. I said, okay, well, how can I look that up so I can show them? So I was able to figure it out on my computer how to look that up, take a screenshot, and send it to them. So I sent it to them and said, hey, so your car got declined. Uh, uh, you know, explain it to them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read what I said. All right. So what I did was I took a picture showing the last four of their card, uh, so they know that that's their card, and then it it shows why I got declined and everything. And then I said, hey, so my so on my end is showing that the payment was declined due to the CVV being invalid. Refer to the picture on the phone with my payment processing company to make sure it didn't charge you. They're telling me that your bank will hold the money even though you got a notification. They told me. That's not possible if it confirmed the transaction on my end. Let me call my bank, but I'm not doing payment again if it says it, it went through already. So at that point, I'm like, okay, well, I'm telling you it didn't go through. I'm trying to communicate with you, but you say that you're not gonna pay it again. You know, all this boils down to just communication and just trying to get on the same track, basically. I understand where they were coming from, but I don't, I don't think they understood where I was coming from. And then I told them, I said, your bank will show the transaction, but it will show it as pending, dash holded. Uh, that's what they're telling me. On my end, it shows Square declined the payment because the three digit code was wrong. They told me at six o'clock, okay, let me call my bank. I said, thank you. Now, I never heard from them since then. So the next day I decided, let me follow up with them. I'm like, what's, you know, I'm trying to make sure the payment get, you know, I'm trying to make sure I get paid. The $89, was it worth it? It was worth it, but not enough, not enough to make a big deal about it. But at the same time, I, I want my money. But, you know, I'll try to follow up with them, try to communicate with them so we can get the issue uh, resolved. Because what, what was gonna end up happening if I didn't follow up with them, 
uh, it was gonna return their money and they was never gonna pay me. But we'll get to that. So I said at 10 30 in the morning, I text them, I said, Good morning. Did you have a chance to talk with your bank? Haven't received anything on my end. Now that was at 10 30, y'all. I had a whole full day of details. Uh, it wasn't until three o'clock that I that I remembered that I texted them and I still didn't get anything back. They didn't text me back, they didn't call me, they didn't leave. They wasn't communicating, and that, that that was the issue. Like I understand it really wasn't my fault because Square declined it because they entered the stuff wrong. So it wasn't really my fault at in a way, but at the same time, all I was asking for them to do is to communicate with me and let me know what's going on so we can resolve the issue. So then I get on Facebook, I look up their Facebook, and lo and behold, they've been on Facebook. They had just shared something 30 minutes ago. Um, actually, around 10.30, they had shared some stuff onto Facebook. They had been on Facebook all day. So I was like, at this point, you're kind of just ignoring my message. So then I get on, I send them a message to Facebook through the business page. And I basically tell them the truth because I had already figured they weren't going to pay me. So I already called the cops, which I know some of y'all are going to be like, oh, that's, that's really extreme to do. But the thing is, I was already prepared for them not to pay me. Because I, I will explain to y'all why I feel like they knew what was going on. I sent a message to my business, uh, my business page because at that point I'm like, you've been on Facebook all day, you have no excuse. Like you could have texted me one, like a quick second and say, hey, I have, I haven't had the chance to call my bank yet. Uh, if you don't mind, can you give me like a day or two to just uh, kind of see if it goes away or whatever? I would have been totally fine with that. I would be like, all right, that's cool. I'll follow up with you in two days. So then I had to send, I sent them a message. I said, um, so I sent them a message. I said, hello, this is my last attempt to resolve the payment issue before I have to report it. Please communicate with me so I so it can be resolved. We still didn't receive anything and I could give you more proof that we did receive the payment. And I just said, thank you. Now, obviously that was a little extreme, but it is what it is at this point. I kid you not, Five minutes later, that was at like 3.30. So at like 3.33, that was at about 3.20. So about at 3.27, they sent me a message and said, I had an emergency last night with my teenager son and I haven't been home all day. And they said they had no signal for a few hours. And they said they did call and the charge was still on there last night. And, I, and they were gonna wait until that day to check it. So. Number one, they've been on Facebook all day. So they didn't have no signal. Uh, that, it, it just, it just, it don't add up. To me, it just didn't add up. Cause I'm like, bro, you were just on Facebook like 30 minutes ago. Like you just shared something onto your page. And then you just shared something onto your page two hours ago. Like, so in, in that time that you was on Facebook, you could have be just communicated with me. That It just didn't add up. And then, uh, but then they told me right after that, they told me, I do not appreciate you being a dick about it, acting like I'm not paying you when I have given you zero reasons for that. Now, I didn't do any day calling or anything, but it is what it is. And then they told me, so try to be professional and don't be threatening me. If you want to get paid for a service you perform, I was never disrespectful or saying anything along the lines that I paid you. So you choose to come to me with respect and save your threats or you could do what you want and get blocked, try again. That's what they told me. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is not going anywhere. Um, I just said, I'm sorry you feel that way, that this is what I do, this is what we do for a living. Please communicate with me so we can resolve it. I'm not trying to be mean about it, but just trying to get paid for my services I perform. And then I just said, this has happened to us before. It never happened to us, but you know, I just added that there. But it is what it is. I kid you not, a couple of minutes after that, they did pay me. Um, so that, that issue was resolved. And all it took was, a, is all, it, it, would, it wouldn't have went that far if it, they would have just communicated with me. That's all they had to do was communicate with me. Now, most of y'all probably have already clicked off of this video. Let me explain my side, why I think this happened on purpose. So I know if I'm going to buy something, if I enter the wrong information, such as the billing address, uh, such as the CVV code or anything like that. Sometimes the website will not catch that. 
uh, or it'll catch it, the bank won't catch it, so the transaction will go through on my end, and it'll show like I bought it, but it doesn't go through on their end. It won't, it won't process the, the order. So I know that because it has happened to me with O'Reilly's when I was trying to order some uh, chemicals. I put in the wrong billing address and it charged me twice. I did it, I did the same thing. It charged me and then it, it declined it on O'Reilly's end. O'Reilly's, the order didn't go through. So I know that even though it showed the notification on my phone, like I paid and it say if I was somebody like me and I said, and I do that, maybe I can enter something wrong and I know I would still get a notification for it, then you tell me. But I feel like the customer kind of knew, you know, that putting in the wrong three digit, it's a three digit number that you literally are looking at. And I know you can make mistakes. I, I understand that. But to, to me, I feel like it was done on purpose to kind of show like, hey, I paid for it. I'm not paying you again, uh, whatever. But I think I threw them off when I was like, hey, if you don't communicate with me, I'm gonna report it. And my reporting is, it is a theft. So here in Texas, it is considered theft of services. And if it doesn't matter, I call the police, it does not matter on the amount. It could be $50, $20, $40, $50, whatever. It is considered theft of services. So as long as you have proof that they were supposed to pay you that, you can report it to the police, um, it's a process. Is it worth the $89? No, uh, I wasn't, I probably wasn't even gonna go through and report it. I told them I was gonna give them, give her a benefit of doubt, you know, and I probably wasn't even gonna report it because it won't be worth the $89, won't be worth that trouble. But on my inspection form right here at the bottom, as it reads, it says the estimate may also change based on the, on the more detail, on whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then it says the estimate is deemed complete and invoice with signature of approval is signed by customer. Payment is expected upon completion of work unless other arrangements agreed on in writing ahead of time. So they, so I had, I had her sign one of these before I left. So that way, if she say, well, he never said I had to pay him that, uh, that was a lie. She signed it. it. It shows how much she owes and all that stuff like that on the sheet. Not only that, I have you know, the messages and all that stuff like that. And was she trying to get away with a free detail? I don't know. And I want to say 80% of me believe that she was and that she did enter the information wrong. 20% of me believe that it was just a big, mis a big misunderstanding and it could have been avoided with more communication. Uh, now, I did, I did set stuff up after that to make sure that that never happens again. So if somebody card gets declined, it'll notify me first. Now, I think it did tell her on her end, she just didn't say anything. It is what it is because I need to look into that more or whether or not it does tell the customer something. The reason why I think it told her something, it, it told her it got declined on her end or it didn't go through on her end is because number one, it never sent her a receipt. Number two, I had a customer the day before, um, I found out their card declined because it was over the limit of whatever they bank allowed. So they had to call the bank and probably not get permission, but tell them, hey, up the limit so I could pay for such and such, or, you know, or whatever. So I had saw that and I was like, okay, if they do, they do their card decline, so they had to up the limit and go back and then they paid me or whatever. So that's why I feel like it probably did tell her card to decline. I don't know, but, um, so hopefully that's how I handled the situation. I got I just I decided to choose violence and I would get my money. Uh, I would never recommend anybody to do what I did over eighty nine dollars. Uh, but I just felt like I had to do what I had to do because I'm over here preaching uh, about theft of services and saying that if somebody doesn't pay you, you could go after them. I'm over here making people sign these papers. I'm over here doing everything that you could do to make sure that somebody doesn't run off with your money. And I just felt some type of way and I was like, nah, if, if I let this person not pay for this or not communicate with them about paying it, like what is the point of doing all this stuff and putting everything that I have uh, into effect to make sure that I get paid for my service? It makes all that stuff non-existent. Non I mean, it might as well be non-existent. 
So, uh, like I said, after after that, there was no issue. I actually just banned her from the page. I will not be servicing that customer anymore. And like I said, it all could have been avoided with just a simple communication. If she would have hit me up a couple of an hour or so after 12, one o'clock, two o'clock, whatever, and say, hey, the charge is still there. Uh, let me see if it's gonna go away after today or tomorrow. Uh, let me call my bank. The bank should be able to should be able to uh, tell me what's going on or whatever. And then from there, um, I'll let you know. But I will, if you don't get your money, I will pay you for your services. That's all she had to do. And it was just a lack of communication. Had me a little worried. Like, okay, am I getting scammed or what or, or whatever. But I'll let y'all be the judge. I know this video is probably going to get some backlash, but it is what it is. But thank you for watching. I hope you have a, have a good day and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.